Hello, my name is Kate. Um, I'm 78 now, but I was diagnosed in 1998 when I was 58 years of age. I was misdiagnosed at first. I was told I had mantle cell lymphoma and within three weeks of seeing the consultant, uh, I started treatment uh, with the chemotherapy CHOP, which is pretty aggressive. I had three months of CHOP, and then a second bone marrow biopsy showed that the bone marrow was still full of malignant cells. And so I asked for a second opinion. And Eve actually phoned me up at home and told me that I actually had small lymphocytic lymphoma. Because I've had such good care and um, so much good support and kindness shown to me that I think I've managed uh, quite well to live with this um, cancer. Um, although originally at first, when you first diagnosis, I don't know how it affected anyone else, but I used to look at people walking past and think, oh, gosh, how lucky they are because they haven't got cancer. But um, it's something you deal with, isn't it? I always say it's a bit like a special club with a rather high joining fee, but you really meet good people there. But I did have one experience. After I'd been shown the slide of my bone marrow, where the consultant said it was grossly infiltrated, and the slide was full of purple cells with one or two yellow ones. I couldn't get that image of that bone marrow out of my head. It just, just was there all the time. And um, I went to a cancer help uh, clinic that offered visualization techniques. And because um, I was very into it shortly after diagnosis. And I saw a lady and she said to me, oh, what does it remind you of? That, that view of your slide. And straight away, I th it reminded me of a night sky with stars. And that was it. it. It worked on me like a charm because I've always loved the night sky and stars. And I thought, well, if that's what's going to kill me, fair enough, really. It's n I'm okay with that. It's not frightening me anymore. And it never did again. Within two years, I had chlorambulism, which was a lot easier than CHOP. And then again, two years later, I had chlorambulism and we took him up. And then again, two years later. And so I felt, I felt as if it wasn't worth planning anything because I was only going to get two years gap before I had to start treatment again. But then I had FMD chemotherapy. And that gave me five years of remission, even though it was only a partial. I've never had a complete remission. It's always just been partial. But five years allowed me to forget all about SLL, to put it on the back burner and just start enjoying life again. And then five years after FMD, I then went into bendamustine and rituximab again. And that, well, it's almost six years before last year when I started on ibrutinib and venetoclax with the Clarity trial. As I approach each checkup appointment, I mentally don't feel too stressed. But I find I must be physically because my blood pressure is very high, whereas normally it's very low. So I guess there is some underlying tension and anxiety. Um, and it's always what the counts are doing. And you take your blood, have your blood taken, and you've got that anxious wait until the results come back. Um, but my husband and I, and he comes every single time I go, um, we have a, found a nice little restaurant and we go 
and we have lunch and we have wine and we celebrate. Whether the counts are good or bad, it's worth celebrating. We've done another appointment and got that over with. But when you find out that you need treatment again, and I've had, this is my sixth lot of treatment, so I've found that out quite a few times. It is a bit um, disturbing um, and it's how you cope with it. And I think what I used to try and do was improve my general health so that I felt as I was contributing something towards the effect of the chemotherapy. It helps to try and eat well, sleep well, start listening to your body. If it says you've done too much, no, oh, I don't want to do that, don't do it. Be more aware of what you can do and what you can't do. And it is difficult um, finding out you can't do what you usually could always do, um, but it, it's something you do get used to. Um, you lower your expectations a little bit. Like, I, I know I'm never going to go skiing or rock climbing, <laughs> but there again, I've never been that ambitious to do those anyway. I think I've had a great life and I'm more inclined for quality rather than quantity. And I think these 20 years of living with this blood cancer, um, it really makes you appreciate every small thing about life. Um, and there are so many good things that um, I wake up most every morning thinking, great, what, what, what's today going to bring? I live with it, I'm not dying with it. And the best thing is to enjoy life. And I just think 20 years, I didn't expect to get 20 years. Um, and they've been good, apart from the odd <laughs> time when you're not feeling so brilliant with chemotherapy. But that's a small price to pay, it really is.